from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the daily TV Mass. I'm Father Larry Marcio. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Sudbury, Ontario, in thanksgiving for the blessings received and for the repose of the souls of family, relatives, and friends. The second also is an anonymous donor this time from Bedford, Texas, in thanksgiving for a lifetime of blessings received for the deceased members of the family and for all the souls in purgatory. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today we celebrate the feast of St. Lawrence Martyr, Deacon, we begin now and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins in life, always relying on God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of that ardor of love for you, by which St. Lawrence was outstandingly faithful in service and glorious in martyrdom, grant that we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made your, up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, they scatter abroad, they give to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. God who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Merciful who give to those in need. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Happy the man. 
merciful who give to those in need. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. Happy the merciful who give to those in need. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady, they will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. Happy the merciful who give to those in need. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be as well. For whoever serves me, the Father will honor. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of our Eucharistic celebration, today we celebrate the feast, and that's why there is a Gloria, of St. Lawrence, deacon and martyr of our early church. Today, our readings speak to us about giving to the poor. The first reading speaks to us by reminding us that those who sow sparingly will also reap sparingly. Those, on the other hand, who sow bountifully will reap bountifully. It also, in the reading, reminds us that God loves a cheerful giver. Quoted right from St. Paul. And that is something that has been used in many Catholic charity campaigns. God loves a cheerful giver. St. Paul rather reminds us that it is written, we Christians, that they scatter abroad, that they give to the poor, and that their righteousness endures forever. And that's from our first reading, St. Paul to the Colossians. And then we have Psalm 112, Psalm 112. And it's quite clear because that Psalm reminds us that we will be happy when we give to those in need. And then on to our gospel. It's an extremely powerful gospel today perhaps one that we don't understand completely, 
but Christ is making it perfectly clear. What can a grain of wheat tell us about the kingdom of God? And that's what the Lord was talking about. As you know, the people who lived at the time of Jesus, they lived in a very much a rural farming society. So therefore, they certainly knew about the growing of seeds. They realized that new life produced by dead seeds might even be a reference, or if for, at least for our sake, as we look back at it now, the scripture, might have been, been a reference to Jesus talking about his death on the cross, and of course, his glorious resurrection from the dead. The seed must die in order to produce new life. Jesus knew that the only way to victory over the power of sin and death was through the cross. And he accepted that cross because it was the will of his Father. There's a great paradox here. It tells us death leads to life. When we die to ourselves, we rise to new life in Jesus Christ. To die to oneself, a little hard to understand perhaps, but to die to oneself means that everything which is contrary to God's will must be put to death. God gives us the gift of grace to say yes to his will and to reject what is contrary to his loving plan for our lives. Jesus promises that we will bear much fruit for him if we choose to deny ourselves for his sake. Lord Jesus, let us be wheat sown in the earth to be harvested by you. For we want to follow you as you have commanded, wherever you lead us. So today we ask you, Lord, to give us fresh hope and joy in serving you all the days of our life. Amen. And now a few words about St. Lawrence, deacon and martyr. The esteem in which the church holds Lawrence is seen in the fact that today's celebration ranks as a feast. We know very little about his life. He is one of those whose martyrdom made a deep and lasting impression on the early church. He was a Roman deacon under Pope Saint Sixtus II. Four days after this pope was put to death, Lawrence and four fellow deacons suffered martyrdom, probably during the persecution of Emperor Valerian. Legendary details of Lawrence's death were known to Damascus, Prudentius, Ambrose, and Augustine. The church built over his tomb became one of the seven principal churches in Rome and a favorite place for Roman pilgrimages. I also had the privilege of visiting St. Lawrence Church Basilica in the year 2000, the Holy Year. A well-known legend has persisted from earliest times Lawrence, as a deacon in Rome, was charged with the responsibility for the material goods of the church and the distribution of alms to the poor. When Lawrence knew that he would be arrested like the Pope, he sought out the poor, widows, orphans of Rome, and gave them all the money he had on hand, selling even the sacred vessels and out the altar, vessels of the altar to increase the sum. Now, when the prefect of Rome heard this, he imagined that the Christians must have considerable treasure, and he sent for Lawrence and said to him, you Christians, say, we are cruel to you, but that is not what I have in mind. I am told that your priests offer in gold, that the sacred blood is received in silver cups, that you have golden candlesticks at your evening services. Now your doctrine says you must render to Caesar what is his? I demand that you bring these treasures. The emperor needs them to maintain his forces. God does not cause money to be counted. He brought none of it into the world with him, only words. Give us that money, therefore, and then be rich in words. St. Lawrence replied that the church was indeed rich. I will show you a valuable part 
but give me time to set everything in order and make an inventory. So after three days, he gathered a great number of the blind, lame, maimed, lepers, orphans, and whittled persons, and put them in rows. When the priest's fract arrived, Lawrence said, these are the treasures of the church. The prefect was so angry, he told Lawrence that he indeed would give Havid's wish to die, but it would be by inches. So he had a great gridrine prepared with coals beneath it and had Lawrence's body placed on it. After the martyr had suffered the pain for a long time, the legend concludes he made his famous cheerful remark, it is well done, now turn me over. St. Lawrence is the patron saint of cooks, of the deacons, and of course, of the poor. Let us now offer our prayers and our petitions to our loving Father. First of all, we pray for those who are poor, not only in material goods, but also in spiritual terms. Let us pray that the Good Shepherd will inspire them to have good spiritual health for the poor, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace within our troubled world today. Let us pray for peace also in our own hearts and in our homes and in our families. For peace, we pray to the Lord. For all of those in the daily TV mass community that have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially for families, for peace of heart, in times of blessing and also difficulty, protection for, cho for, for children, and respect for the elderly and the vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us ask the Blessed Virgin Mary to join us in our prayers and to pray for us as we conclude. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Now the mystery of the water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for it is through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased the sacrifice that we offer you with a humble and a contrite heart. I ask you now to wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you, Simone. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings we joyfully make on the feast day of St. Lawrence, and grant that they become a help to our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your, your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Come up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your beloved martyr, St. Lawrence, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness, you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly here on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy 
Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and who also have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Lawrence, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And yours, we offer peace to our neighbor. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away 
the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, Lord, that the homage of dutiful service which we render on this, the Feast of St. Lawrence, may bring us an increase of your saving grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. On this Feast of St. Lawrence, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.